Hello. Everything in Python is an object. Maybe you have heard of this statement. Everything is an object is partially true and partially false. It is true because here, float, that was an object, map was an object too. But there are also things in the language, in the Python language, which are not objects. Is dot an object? No, it's not. How about the colon? Nope. How about if? Is it an object? No, that's also not an object. So there are also some other things besides objects in Python. But don't worry, because I'll give you now a complete list of every possible thing that you can encounter in Python. And it's only nine categories, and objects are one of them. So you have objects in Python, and you also have eight other things, eight other categories. And this code that we built, you can see that I removed some of the elif conditionals to make the code smaller, so we can focus on the concept. So this code that we built contains all these nine categories, all the possible elements that you can encounter in Python. And so the categories are first, I give you the hint, objects. And I, I talked about objects already, uh, but if you still don't understand what they are, that's completely normal. We are only at less than 1% of the course. And as you progress through the course, you will understand objects and maybe you'll understand them better than me. Haha. <laughs> uh, but for now, if you still cannot tell what are objects and what are not objects, um, then just use the type function in a Python interactive session. And then you can enter anything you want to check if it's an object or not. For example, you want to check map. And so you get type. But first make sure that you have executed the script so the Python interactive um, shell actually reads all this code. Otherwise, you will not be able to access map. If you use type if, you'll get this error, a syntax error. So if you get a syntax error, the thing you entered there is not an object. Similarly, you can check if float 4.1 Make sure you use the code correctly, because if you forget something like, for example, the code, again, you'll get a syntax error, but that doesn't mean that this was not an object. You simply didn't put, didn't write the syntax correctly. So try again with a correct syntax like that. Execute. And so you get the type of the object. So that's how you can distinguish between objects and non-object entities in Python. The objects in our code were volume. Now volume is a module object. We will talk about modules later, but modules are, are also an object. You can check type volume. You probably will get an error because in the interactive shell, volume has not been yet imported as a name. So import volume first, and then check its type. So you see that it's a type module. So type works with volume, that means volume is an object. So volume is an object, map is an object, this here was an object, this here too, this int minus one was an object, these, that, that, are identifiers. I'll talk next about them. And the method was also an object. It's a built-in function or a built-in method, whatever you call it, it doesn't matter, but it's important to distinguish that. The method is an object and it gets as attribute another object, right? So almost everything is actually an object. We have the other method here, an object, float was an object. The other method, an object, float, an object too, and so on here. List with its attribute was also an object. So as attributes, the list had this iterable here, 
which contains two other objects represented by the identifiers here. So the two float, then the map object with its list object represented by its identifier, and then the save method, which is an object with a string object. Great. And then we have this other object, print. So print print is a built-in function or method object as well. So these are objects. Next category is identifiers. Identifiers are just names we give, we assign to objects. Latitude, longitude are identifiers. Now, type will work for identifiers as well, but that doesn't mean that latitude is actually an object. The object that latitude represents, which is this thing here, that is the object. So it's like John is a person, but the person, the ent entity person is actually the object. John is just the name of John, but we use the name John to refer to that person. So latitude, the identifier here um, in Python works as a proxy, so to say. So all these assignments here are names, location, my map. All these are identifiers or names. You can also call them variables, whatever name you like to use to refer to this category. So we have two categories already. Mm. The next is keywords. Simply speaking, Keywords are all these words you see in orange. Uh, maybe in your editor, you are using another editor, maybe you'll see them in a different color. But in this code, from import if and else are all keywords. You can see the difference that they don't have this round parentheses after them like you have with objects. So keywords are used to give commands, specific commands. Such as here, you say from this module, import that object of that module. Or here, you use this keyword, so it's a special, it's a reserved. So these keywords are reserved words in Python. When you start with if, Python knows that you are not about to create an identifier, such as you when you start with antipose latitude, for example, Python knows that you are about to create a conditional with if, because if you use if as an identifier, if equal to float, well, then you press enter two times, you get the syntax error. So even though the syntax is apparently correct, we know we, we have the identifier, the assignment operator and the object after that, but if is a reserved keyword, so we get an error. Next, we have delimiters. Delimiters are these special characters such as the codes, this assignment operator here, which is not actually an operator because operators are something else, which you will learn in just a bit what they are. But this is commonly referred to as an operator in the Python jargon. And the limiters are also this colon here, the dots, and also the parentheses that you see everywhere. Next, we have blank lines. Blank lines are this one in here, this one in here, this, this one in here, this and that. Uh, so blank, blank lines are just used for from you as a programmer to separate different blocks of code just for readability purposes. Uh, but for Python, it doesn't matter how many blank lines you use or if you use any at all. Python will ignore any blank line that you have in the code. Then we have white space. White space is this one here between from and volume between volume and import, and between import and map. And also here, so every space that you see between different elements of the language, 
you can use as much space, white space, as you like. For example, if I used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7 spaces there and execute the code, the code will work the same. So white space, just like blank lines, work the same for Python. Uh, bl blank lines and white space are just for you as a programmer to make the code readable. You can also choose not to have white space here, for example, between that variable and this variable, and it will work the same. Uh, but it's good practice to have space to make the code more readable. Here, though, in some cases, from volume, you'd get an error if you remove that space. So it doesn't work because you have to separate the keyword from from the name of the object, which is a module in this case. Same would go for if longitude here. You have to have at least one space. Then we have indentation. Indentation is this thing in here. So it's every white space that comes after a colon. We have the colon here and we have indentation here. Indentation has to be at least one white space. So if I don't have any white space here at all, I will get an indentation error. So you need to have at least one space, but four is advised to have the code at a good readability level. Right. Then we have comments. Comments in Python, we don't have any comments in this code, but what are comments? Let me create a comment. Get input values. What I just did is I created a comment line just above these two lines. That means I'm giving some description about what comes next in the next block. So get input values. That means that in this code here, what I'm doing is I am writing, I am creating the input values. You can be as descriptive, descriptive as you want. So this is not syntax. This is not Python code. You can write whatever you like here. And choose values just like that. But you always have to have this symbol when you start a comment and then you can have a space or not, but it's good to have a space there. And it's good to start with a capital letter, but these are not forced by Python. All that matters with Python is that you have this symbol because when you have that, Python knows that that is a comment and it will ignore it. It will not execute. It will not read that line as code. Just like that, you can have comments everywhere in your code. Add 180 for negative attitudes. Subtract 180 for positive longitudes. So I'm giving some clue. And why do we write these comments? Well, if you come after a week or after two weeks and, and read these codes, you'll probably have a hard time understanding it again. Uh, so you'll see these lines and you'll wonder, oh, why did I wrote these lines? So the comment gives you a clue what these lines are for. And also it could be helpful if someone else reads your code. So try to be as descriptive as possible when you write these comments. And lastly, we have the last category, which is operators. Where are these operators? Because we covered everything, but you will understand why we didn't have any operators here. You will understand that in the next video. And of course, you will also understand what operators are in Python. So talk to you later in the next video.